Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about and try to clarify. So Elena Pierce made a video and in that video she was talking about the completionist and her visa. Her visa was held by her brother's company. I actually did not know his brother had a company. I again am very unversed in this and I do learn from the comments. The company is called the true gamer or one true gamer or something like that gamer I actually have it pulled up let me go ahead and grab the screenshot that one video gamer or tovg that is a company and i believe the company had her visa and was doing her a favor in her opinion was doing her a favor but she would pay them five percent of what she earned and that would go to the company now, I want to clarify that this is, uh, I think she has some very special visa, um, which is an extraordinary visa, which is not common. Let me explain how uncommon the Wayne Gretzky, R Wayne Gretzky is kind of the example that we're taught for this visa, when uh, the O-1 visa. So we're going to go over the H-1 visa and the O-1 visa, the individuals with extraordinary ability or achievement. The O-1 non-immigrant visa is for individuals who possess extraordinary ability in the sciences, arts, education, businesses, or athletics, or who has demonstrated a record of extraordinary achievements in the motion picture or television industry and has been recognized nationally or internationally for those achievements, so on and so forth. Um, here are the classifications. Um, extraordinary ability in O1A in sciences, education, business, or athletics. O1B, uh, extraordinary ability in the arts or extraordinary achievement in motion picture or television. O2, individuals who accompany a O1 artist or athlete to assist in a specific event. O3, individuals who are the spouse or children of O1 and O2. So I've seen some questions i i i think she i don't know if she is actually extraordinary but this is a very very tough visa to apply for it's a very tough visa to be granted it is um, in terms of what you talk about your clients with um, this isn't the way that you normally do it i had a doctor who was a extraordinary ability but we couldn't do this visa we had to do the h1b although you could argue that he's one of the 10 best doctors for this a particular heart surgery in in globally um so it's a very difficult thing to argue because they would have to basically your all your achievements and they would basically say hey well this guy's more why don't we give this guy it's a difficult visa assuming it's a h1b which is most visas are going to be h1b visas the federal law prohibits an employer from requiring that employee to pay for or reimburse the employer's expense for U.S. citizen and immigration services, filing fees, or attorney fees associated with the preparation or filing of the H-1B petition. So assuming that Elena had a lawyer, and I, I think she does for immigration attorney, it seems like she got you know, maybe some bad legal advice early on and she was stuck in Japan. I, I watched that video and my understanding is until she actually came with the the uh, true, I don't even know, Tove, that one video gamer, until she was part of that company, they had a better lawyer. And the immigration lawyer was better than the previous lawyers she was using from Australia to the U.S. Again, I will say this, I don't, every immigration is is a difference that I don't know exactly how famous she is in her field. I just think the extraordinary visa, which she does remark, is probably, you know, when you talk about paperwork and visa and re visa fraud, re visa fraud is rampant. Everyone thinks they're extraordinary, and they're not. You know, <laughs> extraordinary is meant for, like, Wayne Gretzky. That's a guy who's extraordinary. Um, when you're at the top of the top, right, this, you know, most people do the H-1B and under the H-1B, you can't have this 5% thing where you're paying back 5%. 
and the TOVG, um, you have to kind of ask, okay, well, did they do it for anyone else besides Elena, right? It seems like um, that the brother, Jax, was garnishing 5% of her income for years. And that seems like even, even if you know nothing about immigration, you probably think that's illegal because it is. It is. And when you talk about um, the financial dealings and stuff, it's very easy to say, hey, you know what, Elena, I want you to support the completionist, my bro, because you know what, you got to go hard for this charity because I got your visa. And even if you don't directly say it, it's subtle. Now, I have um, my best friend, and he was under this uh, H-1B visa for a developing company, a developer in Houston. And they really had him working really hard. They would have him stay late at work. They would have him work on weekends. And this was never actually any, the U.S. employees never had to do any of that. He was the only one who had to do it. And he was always eager and happy to do it because he had to behave a certain way to get the visa and get his perm and get his green card. And unfortunately, no matter how often people, no matter how nice people are, there is that, you know, cloud over your head that if I don't act and behave, they can take away my visa. They cannot sponsor me. They cannot pay my lawyers. And that means I'm screwed. So I do think that there is something a little bit wrong here. Because remember, the charity was run very poorly. It was run, run incredibly poorly. This part of the company seems to be running really well. Right, Elena's happy with the visa. The uh, TOVG is happy with the money they got. It it is quite interesting. So I know some people think you know. I got the question: Is it human trafficking? It's not. This is just something that you shouldn't do. And with a lawyer uh, in in this, you know, is it visa fraud? Let me let me explain. So people are getting confused. I'm not accusing Elena of visa fraud. Okay, see if anything is a victim. How do you know she's a victim? Because she lost 5% of her income. There you go. That's a victim, right? What I am saying is there is something wrong with this business model because if this business model was allowed, I go back to the completionist. If you allow every charity to hold money for 10 years and not spend it, then you're, it's a disaster. It's a little disaster if it is legal for charities to hold for 10 years and not that 600,000 plus dollars and not donate the money because every charity in the future will do so because they'll be like, oh, well, they didn't get in trouble for it. Why should we get in trouble with it? And that's case law. So the IRS finds them totally innocent and it's all Gucci. Well, then for the next charity that anyone has, they're going to do the same. Here is a problem. The problem is with OnlyFans, with you guys know what I'm talking about here, right? Like you guys you know Andrew Tate, right? I mean, with these uh, alpha male Andrew Tate running around. Could you imagine a company that takes 10%, 15%, 25%? Could you imagine a company that holds your visa and then just has you working you know, just 90 hours a day, even uh, 90 hours a week, even though you're not supposed to be working that much, uh, but you're not reporting it because you're afraid that you're afraid that the company holding your visa won't renew it. That's the danger here. The da So Elena is not the danger to the society that we live in. The person, the danger is the person who has the structure in place where there's a kickback from their total income earnings back to the company to pay. You're, you as the employee are not supposed to pay for the, the application. You're not supposed to pay for the lawyer who does the application. You are not supposed to pay for any of this stuff. Now there is a exception and the premium processing fee can be paid by the employee. So the employee can pay for that depending on certain circumstances, right? And so the employee can cover that fee from premium processing. If you've ever done immigration, you know that you do want premium processing, but typically it's just a one-time fee. Um, and it's benefiting the um, employee rather than the business, being, being a business necessity, right? 
So if it's a business necessity, the employer pays for it. If it's something that the employee just really wants, then the employee can pay for it. And that's premium processing. And and, and, and again, dependents and you know children and spouses, they would cover that. That I don't think is the issue here because the pr premium processing wouldn't be a percentage, it would be a flat fee. So the percentage kind of indicates a it's something different. I've never really seen it work in this way because I worked with mostly doctors and nurses getting their visas. But can you imagine a doctor comes to the U.S. and the hospital sponsors them and holds their visa and then they just kind of work for random hospitals all around and are they, I don't know, they make a YouTube channel or something and they just get a percentage of their earnings for a undisclosed amount of years the danger would be would this doctor actually be performing that well would you trust a doctor like that and, and and the answer is no because you want him to work at the hospital that has his visa that's where he that's what they told the government that's where he should be and he should be working in similar working conditions as any other doctor he shouldn't be overworked he shouldn't be underpaid he's got to be paid what you said that you would pay him so H-1 visa actually has a salary. It, it says, okay, this salary is what we're going to give this guy. And, you know, in, in no circumstance have I ever seen, you know, I've been doing immigration for almost 10 years, probably 10 years right now, in, uh, in a month, about 10 years. And I've never seen a percentage of earnings. That would obviously, from the visa holder back to the employer, that's wrong that whatever you say about anything else that is definitely wrong anyway let me know if uh, you guys have other questions in the comment sections i just want to clarify that i don't think elena is a bad person i don't think is any of that she is actually the victim in this uh, in what she has described not the perpetrator which would in this case if it is true be gerard's brother bye guys